Hi, I'm Kevin Mullen, and this is One on One. My guest on this edition of One on One is Lyra Ghos. Lyra is the executive director of the Clio Yulao Center. Tell us about the Clio Yulao Center and what its mission is here on the peninsula. Well, I probably first have to start with a name. Sure. Because it's quite a tongue twister, and um, I thought I would just clarify that. Sure. Cleo Yulao, obviously, was the name of the person. She was a clinical social worker. She taught at Stanford. She worked for the Health Council. Um, and she was the kind of person, if you could picture Mother Teresa, that's kind of what she looked like, too. She just drew in a lot of kinds of people in the mental health profession that were wanting to work with youth, but work from a strengths-based perspective so that you're looking at people's strengths in therapy rather than deficits. So about 15 years ago, there was a group of people who were what we'd call her mentees, and they were interested in starting an agency that embodied her whole sort of lifelong res mission of looking at strengths in people's lives. So that's who Cleo Yulao was, and, and from that, we created our core values and our mission, and that whole concept is the, the concept of resiliency. And our exact mission is um, we are looking to build the lifelong resiliency of youth by strengthening the caring capacity of the adults in their lives. So tell us about, I'm curious about this notion of resiliency. I know what the word means, but how does it guide the work that you're involved in on a daily basis? Well, if you think about resiliency, it's the concept of bouncing back from adversity. And most of the youth we deal with um, have had pretty adverse situations. They have parents in jail, they have, you know, um, a situation at home where maybe there's eight or nine people living at home. And although we don't work with all of the youth directly, we work with the teachers in their lives. And so there was actually a 40-year research study that looked at kids much like these kids on the island of uh, Kauai in Hawaii. And the researchers followed them for 40 years. And they found that actually about 70% of them ended up leaving, leading successful lives, happy lives, doing well, having good relationships. And when they looked back at to one of the core reasons, it was because they had some adult in their life who believed in them, who set high expectations, and helped them to achieve those expectations. And those are the three core principles of resiliency, that if you have these, these things that protect you, protective factors, you will bounce back from things that happen in your life. So when they looked at these kids, they found that most often it was a teacher in their lives that had helped them bounce back because maybe they didn't have an adult at home. It could have been a grandma, it could have been someone else, but basically it was a teacher in their life that helped them bounce back. And that's how it guides what the work that the Cleo Yulao Center is. Because we're looking at the adults in kids' lives, how to build those adults' resiliency and therefore build the resiliency of children. Right, so you're having an impact on, on those kids naturally, but you're really working with the teachers primarily. So, so describe that for us. So, what that means, and, and just geographically, I know that the, the home office, if you will, is in Mountain View, but you, right. you work with um, folks in San Mateo County and Santa Clara County. Talk That's a little right. bit about uh, just sort of the parameters there and then, and then how you do your work. Absolutely, and also just to say that this is one part of our work. We do work directly with youth too, and maybe we can get sure. to that a little bit later. But um, what we do is we're actually a mental health organization. So all of the people that work with us that are program folks, if you will, um, are licensed clinical social workers, PhD in child and adolescent psychology, um, marriage family therapists, and they're doing this work not because it's super high paid, because the nonprofit sector is not, but because they really believe in this systems change. So this is what it looks like. We give a school, if you will, um, a mental health professional, someone who has a private practice, someone who's worked a lot in this area, and they come into a school and they work with the whole staff in their classroom. So for 12 to 14 hours a week, this person, let's call it a woman, goes into the school and goes into the classroom at the request of the teacher. So if you're a teacher and you, you say, Lyra, I'm really have, struggling with these three kids. They're really giving me a lot of challenge. I don't know what to do. I'm going to come into the classroom and I'm going to look at the things that you're doing with these students to reach them, to reach them on content, but to reach them on emotional and social level so that you've actually helped them feel connected to the class. Maybe you've, we help you figure out how to call on them more. Maybe we point out, you know, today 
Richard was actually looking at you today. Did you notice when you said this? These are very small things, but to a teacher, they're huge. They don't know. They're isolated in the classroom. They don't know when they're connecting with a student. They don't quite know when things are going wrong. If you look at the training of teachers, um, and God bless them, but they have about one year of training. And in that time, the coursework that they take, there's one class focused on safety and social emotional wellness. And that has to cover things like using the fire hydrant, etc. And when you get into the classroom, you realize, oh my gosh, I've got 25 hungry children there that need me as a person and as a human being. Yeah, there really is that emotional component There's, that's present it's there. It's probably 95%. And, and research has so shown when you have a connection with a teacher and that teacher believes in you and, and it's clear you can feel that you care about me as a student, I want to do better and I do better. So the social emotional piece is directly tied to academic and engagement, overall school engagement. So we're looking at cre creating the kind of relationship where a kid can go back and said, Mr. Mullen was the greatest teacher. And they may not even know why, but the main reason why is that that teacher cared about them, believed in them, and had them do things in the class that made them feel successful. And that's what we're doing to support teachers. We're also looking at the way that teachers interact with one another, because oftentimes in an educational environment, there's few resources, so there can be a little bit of um, tension among teachers. So we're trying to help teachers communicate more closely in service of a student. You've got the same student as I have. Um, another gal has the same student. What are the strategies we're using to reach them in the classroom? So we're helping facilitate small groups. Right. So there's great, great work being done with those teachers. You mentioned that there is some direct work with students. So, right. so talk about that if you can. Well, in San Mateo County, we have a four-way collaboration with the juvenile justice um, system, with the San Mateo County Office of Ed, with the Cleo Ulao Center our organization and also with the Wright Institute of Psychology which is located in um, Berkeley. It's not part of Berkeley. And we're providing, in, interns come from the Wright Institute of Psychology and we provide ongoing training every two weeks on individual and group psychodynamic therapy to service these kids that are there. We work with about 200 students a year and for them it may be the very first time they've had a trusting, caring relationship with an adult. Um, it's one-on-one -on -one therapy that you would get, that you'd pay two or three hundred dollars for in the outside world. And it's a time where I show up, say I'm the student every day, and think, oh my gosh, Mr. Mullen showed up again this week, week to see me. Maybe no one's ever showed up. Maybe they've said, I'll be there, and then they're not there. So the trust that's created there is a big thing. Again, it's that concept of resiliency in addition to having deep reflective psychodynamic therapy. So the work that we're doing with those youth is really life-changing. We're the only program in 14 years that hasn't been cut in some contract funding because the impact and the way that we work with the teacher and the probation officer at those schools. These are alternative schools. There's only 30 kids on site. Because many of the youth are on probation, there's a probation officer on site, a teacher, and they have to work in tandem. One's a disciplinarian and one's a teacher. So again, we're looking at the way that adults work with one another to create an environment of wellness, if you will, right. there. So it, it sounds incredible, this, this work that you do. How do you, how do you measure those practical impacts that you're having yeah. on, on those children, at-risk youth and so forth, D different um, people that are touched by the program, how do you measure it? So the very first, so with the direct youth program, um, the juvenile justice system actually runs numbers on recidivism, on dropout rates, on graduation from high school. And um, so we actually get those numbers from them. We've had independent studies that also look at the fact that our kids are staying in high school more as compared to the kids that aren't getting the counseling. They also have uh, lower rates of recidivism and the types of crime that they're conducting is much less in severity. In regards to the teachers, we're looking at um, measures that look at, you know, do they feel more hopeful? Are they able to connect with the students that aren't having adversity? So they're looking at the same skills that they're learning to deal with more challenging kids 
kids and looking at all the kids and how that's transferring. So we're just short on time here. I want to make sure people find out how they can get more information about your centers. Well, we're at in Mountain View at um, 2483 Old Middlefield Way. The best way to look at us, though, is, the, is at our website, Center, And we have an event coming up on April 21st. We'd love for people to come out and see the kinds of educators and kids that we're working with.